If you're watching this video and you made it this far, I'm going to be putting that GED math test into perspective for you. Got an example. We have three people, A, B, and C. A's been taking piano lessons and practicing several days each week since he was a small child. And B took a few lessons which didn't go well, then quit. And two months later took a few more lessons, then quit again. And person C took lessons and practiced many hours every single day for four months nonstop. So which of these can actually say they can play songs on a piano? Well, A and C. A can because they've been doing it ever since they were a small child, right? And C has been doing it with a lot of determinations to learn. So B probably can play the beginning of a song, but I doubt they can play several songs, okay? There's an old saying that says it takes 10,000 hours to become a master of a skill. That's like spending eight hours a day for three and a half years. Now, there are people that say you don't need 10,000 10, hours to become a master of something. Well, when they say master, they mean you can play violin at a concert at Carnegie Hall. That's what they're talking about, okay? We don't need to master math to, play, to pass the GED test. We just need to know the basics well enough to pass, unless you want to be a math major in college or a math teacher. And the more we want it, the more effort we'll give because our grit and determination is going to equal our success. This was the big part of what I wanted to show you. I'll step back a little bit so you can see the board. Students are doing algebra in grade six or earlier. I actually have textbooks for third grade that have variables in them. They don't have little boxes with blank spaces. They're actually doing variables in third grade. So in grade six, sixth grade, if there's 365 days in a year, 180 of those days are school. And the sixth grader is going to learn this over the 180 days. And see how familiar these are? These are a lot of the lessons in the GED book, aren't they? Ratios and probability and geometry and area and volume. It all looks familiar. But they have all those months to learn this. And then in grade seven, they have another 180 days to learn this stuff. And if you look, area and volume, area and volume. So they're learning about integers and rational numbers and inequalities and circumference and a little bit of statistics over 180 days of school. Then in grade 8, they learn all of these things. Look at exponents, proportional relationships, linear equations, functions, transformations, Pythagorean theorem, more volume, two-way frequency tables. And then for Algebra 1 in ninth grade, They've got another 180 days of school, and look, rational numbers, equations, inequalities, factoring, systems of equations, absolute value, functions again, quadratic equations. And if you notice, there's going to be repeats. So it'll say inequalities here and inequalities here, or area and volume, area and volume, volume. Because the way learning works is whatever you learn here, the next year you learn it again, but with a little more information. And then you learn it again with a little more information and again with a little more information so it's layered. And then your brain can retain it because it's slowly been layering as you learn instead of just cramming it all in, okay? So each of these are 180 days of school. Now, if each class was about an hour long, because they're what, 40, 50 minutes for a class, so we can round it off to an hour. And it's not counting homework, but that 180 hours for each grade times those four grade years, 6th, 7th, 8th, and then freshman year high school, that's 720 hours of math. There's no magic or instant way to learn these lessons. You have to go all in and just do it. You set up a study area and study time schedule and tell everyone around you to leave you alone during that time. Say, do not bother me. Do not call me. Wait till I'm done. And the GED test prep materials were designed for a student who dropped out in their senior year of high school who learned all this. They learned all of this in school and then dropped out in their senior year, and they only need a refresher course. That's why there's only one page for the lesson with a few problems on the next page for the skill focus. It's just a refresher course. So if you've never learned any of these, well, then it's going to take you a while. Regular stu students have more than 720 hours of math classes to learn what you're trying to learn to take the GED test. Isn't that a different perspective? That's almost two years of math every day for what you're going to try to learn in a few months. So how many days will you need to do this? Well, if you stuck with their schedule, 
one hour a day for two years would do it. If you want to cut that in half to one year instead of two, you'd have to do two hours a day. And if you want to cut that year in half to six months, well, then you better do four hours a day. And if you want to cut that in half to three months, because you're really in a hurry to get your GED, then you better be doing eight hours a day. And you don't need an expensive tutor. There's free help with community groups and churches and libraries. They have volunteers that come in for free to help you. So make a plan of attack and stick with it. You may have to watch an occasional ad on my channel, but it's nothing like having to pay for an expensive tutor, right? When you take a practice test, find the lesson that matches any wrong answers that you get and do those lessons again. Find out why there's holes, why there's missing pieces, okay? So I have a quote for you. It's an Albert Einstein quote. In order to succeed, your desire for success should be greater than your fear of failure. So don't be afraid to fail. Don't get frozen into place. Don't let that be you. Have that desire for success, okay? Here's another Einstein quote. A person who never made a mistake never tried anything new. And here's one by an anonymous author that's very similar to this Einstein one. A person who never made a mistake never made anything. I really like this one. So, more perspective. I've shown you this before during the playlist. There's 27 lessons in this Steck Von GED book. And if you look at these colorful dots, these are the grade levels that correlate with those lessons. So look, lesson one was like second, third, and fourth, and fifth grade. See that? And as the lessons went up, so did the grade levels. So that by the time we were doing unit three and unit four, it was all sixth grade or above. See that? But they overlapped. Look at lesson 19 and lesson 18 when we first started learning algebra. Well, that was taught in sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, and ninth grade, and some in algebra too for that one lesson. So the regular student got five years of schooling to learn what you're trying to learn in just one lesson. See? Hmm. So you can't learn all of algebra in five lessons and all of geometry in five lessons, but you could if it was a refresher course. If you already learned it all and you're just doing it as a refresher course, which is what this is. Now, if you want something enough that you'll do just about anything to get it, you'll probably get it. Like the bride who's trying to lose 10 pounds to fit into a wedding dress. She's going to do anything she can to fit into that wedding dress, okay? And if you don't pass the test the first time, retreat, regroup, and attack again. Because you're still going to be a better person than you were the day before. Because it was a learning experience. Now you know what the testing hall looks like. Now you know what the chairs look like. Now you know what the test looks like. You'll probably do better the next time. Okay? And you'll know what you need to learn again. It's my favorite Michael Jordan quote. I've shown this before. I can accept failure. Everyone fails at something. But I can't accept not trying. So go step by step with each lesson. Don't skip around because you'll be making it tougher for your brain to sort and remember the information. Your brain is like a filing cabinet. You want to put everything in there neatly so it can be pulled out neatly. And then right before the test, watch the GED playlist again, skipping the videos that you definitely know. If you get to a video and you say, I think I know that, huh, that's not it. If you think you know it, then you don't know it. You have to say you definitely know it. Watch the video again. It's only going to help you for the test. Make sure you get a good night of sleep. Show up a bit early to get comfortable with your surroundings. You don't want to be rushing in at the last minute saying, oh, I got to take the test, I got to take the test. You want to just smooth your way in there and look at what's going on and feel comfortable and relaxed before you take the test. And only change an answer if you know for sure it needs to be changed because usually your gut reaction, your first reaction is the best one. And pay close attention to the details of the diagrams. Sometimes the diagrams will have little hidden information that will help you solve the problem. Read word problems a couple times, okay? Draw pictures on your scratch paper if that'll help you. Now, my home page has many, many more playlists than this, but these are the ones that'll help you. And if you had troubles with, trouble with units one and two, then you're going to need to watch the playlists for grade three, four, and five. These are entire school years in, in playlists. You can get the Go Math books online. I know they're available on Amazon, and they're paperback. They're great. And 
If you, if you had trouble with Unit 3 and 4 with Algebra and Geometry, you can watch the Grade 6, 7, and 8 playlists. You can even get the Go Math books that go with those. And Algebra 1, I used Prentice Hall. I used an older copyright because it was cheaper. You can get the teacher's editions with instructions and answers. So this is the 6th grade Go Math textbook. It looks like this. And see the dots on the side here? There's six dots. See that? I know the lighting is kind of hard. That means it's sixth grade. So however many dots are on side of the book tells you what grade it is. And look at this. Composite figures. Look at how nice and colorful this is. And it's paperback, so you can write in it. And it gives you all the instructions. It gives you a lot of room to do the problems. See that? This is sixth grade. This is surface area and volume. It even has Carmen San Diego. See? It's got review words. It's got a nice glossary and index in the back. Solid figures. See? A lot of room to work. And this is sixth grade. Volume of cylinders. Use a formula. Here's the glossary in the back. See? The sixth grade book even tells you which page that it was from, okay? So if you do want the answers, because the answers aren't in the back of the book, you can get a teacher's edition. So this is a teacher's edition for the eighth grade book, okay? See? And if you look at the pages in here, instead of being like this, where they're all big, they're little, and this is a hardcover. And then in red, it's got the answers. So if you want the answers, you can buy yourself a teacher's edition online and look at the problem and then try to solve it and see how they got $15, okay? And it's going to have all kinds of extra information in here. See? It tells you all the answers. So... If this would help you more, then go this route. Because if you've never learned this stuff and you dropped out of school, like maybe in your freshman year or something, then you're going to need to learn all this information. So if it's a refresher, the GED book can help you. But if you're learning it for the first time, you might want to get these Go Math books and just dig in and start doing it. Okay? I don't get anything from Go Math, I just like the books. So I wish you luck. If you do pass the test, I'm on Twitter and Facebook, and you can let me know. I'd really love to know. And I hope you do well. Have a great day. Bye.